And I've forgotten my radiator, so I'll have to go downstairs again, which is another trip up and down the stairs. <laughs> Gosh, it sure does feel like it's small form factor build time here at level one or build month or whatever you want to call it. This video is about the MSI Unify Z690i. This is an ITX motherboard. This is the Z690 chipset, which is designed for Alder Lake. This is an ITX motherboard that is designed with 10 plus one plus one power phases for the 12900K. A chip that can consume 241 watts. Now, that's compounded by the fact that you want to run that in something teeny tiny like this. This is the Encase M1. Look how tiny this case is. It's so tiny and it's so modular. I love this case, but that's not today. At the other end of the spectrum is this. And this is how I knew that we could do an Alder Lake build. This is not ITX. This is 128 cores in just barely under 24 liters. Dual 280 watt CPUs plus, plus an RX 6900 XT. How insane is this build? It's 1.21 kilowatts. Yeah, so this thing actually does reasonably well managing the heat. The NKS M1, not for noobs. Building this with $9,000 Epic CPUs, not for noobs. But I do have this. And we've done some videos on this before, if you haven't seen it. This is the Cooler Master NR200. This is the NR200 Max, which comes with an 800 watt power supply. And this, this is a very similar layout to the Encase M1, but it's much larger. It's uh, more friendly to 280 millimeter coolers. Uh, 280 millimeter radiators, I should say. This is a 240 millimeter radiator. And so you can see we can, we've got some options. This is a, you know, of course a custom loop radiator. I gotta put my fittings in, copper lined, all that kind of stuff. So this is what we're gonna build in. But first, we need to unbox and take a look at the motherboard. I love this case. That case is easy enough to build in, even if it's your first build. You don't even necessarily have to go custom loop. Like I say, if you get the Max version, it comes with an AIO, which is gonna be quite a bit less expensive than the stuff that I'm showing you. And you're basically gonna be good to go off to the races. Now, that AIO will struggle a little bit with the 12900K, especially if you're gonna do overclocking. Whereas the build that I'm about to show you, is gonna do a little bit better because we've got two 240 millimeter radiators and uh, quite a bit of water through those radiators. But first, the motherboard. So here we are. It's got a single eight pin power input. We've got our 24 pin ATX power, four SATA, USB-C, 30 pin USB 3.0, that's five gigabit, plus a USB 2.0 header. So you can use an internal USB 2 peripheral or breakout header if you want. We've got our PCI Express 5.0 by 16 expansion slot. So it's a little tough to see, but this motherboard actually has three M.2 slots. Two that are stacked right on top of each other, plus another one on the back. That's gonna be great for our NR200 case because one of the things about these Cooler Master cases, these are U.2 drives. These are typically found in servers. These particular ones are Optane. But you can also pick up four and eight terabyte U.2 drives off of eBay or from Enterprise Surplus for usually somewhere around $100 to $150 a terabyte. And these are older drives. They don't really perform as well as modern PCI Express 4 drives, but you can typically get a really good deal on them because they were designed for the enterprise. They're usually pretty fast or pretty reliable. So it's an option for storage. It's one that I personally like. And the, uh, the case will hold two of them. And with two M.2 slots, I can use adapter cables to get to two of these. I'll show you that in a minute. Exciting times. Now our three M.2 slots, one's a PCI Express 4.0 by four directly into the CPU. The other two are from the Z690 chipset. One of them supports PCIe 3.0 by four and the other one supports PCI 4.0 by four. And that does mean that you can run NVMe RAID on this motherboard with two PCI Express 4.0 by four devices. So if you wanna get the very highest end, you know, like the Samsung 980, those are almost eight gigabytes per second and run a RAID zero of those for 16 gigabytes per second for your operating system, you can do that. That's crazy, but that's awesome, but shocking and disturbing. In an ITX system, I mean, how crazy is that? All right, so this motherboard has two DDR5 DIMM slots, as I mentioned, that will work up to DDR5 6800 OC. 6800 
Yes, it turns out with DDR5, it's a lot easier to support higher memory clocks when you've got two slots instead of four. So two slots and an ITX, hey, it's a win-win. Of course, that does mean that right now you can only put up to 64 gigabytes of memory in this platform. That may change in the future if memory densities change, maybe. Don't know for sure about that. That's maybe a check back later kind of thing. The other thing that you'll note about our attractive backplate here is that it's used as a heat sink. If we look, we can see we have thermal connections all around the board, which will help dissipate heat from our VRM because well, let's face it, we don't have a lot of PCB real estate here and we're channeling, you know, 250 watts through this CPU socket and <laughs> through the motherboard if we're overclocking this thing to the max, maybe even beyond 250 watts. This motherboard also features three four pin fan headers, two at the top and one just above that X16 slot, which is a little tricky to get to. This motherboard does have an RGB header at the top edge of the motherboard. It is a digital RGB header. So the rainbow header, if you will. So there it is, you're good to go with that. Okay, let's take a look at the rear IO because there's some special stuff going on here. First off, the easy parts. We've got a clear CMOS button. We've got DisplayPort out and HDMI out. Now those, those are for the onboard integrated GPU of your you know, Intel i7 or i9, your, your Alder Lake CPU that you're running in this platform. Then we have four five gigabit USB ports, two 10 gigabit USB ports, and our Intel i225V two and a half gig NIC. Then our Wi-Fi 6E solution with our dual antennas. Now the Thunderbolt 4 controller is something special. It's based around the Intel JLH8450. So that gives you two Thunderbolt 4 ports. It's gonna work at 40 gigabits, you know, for Thunderbolt, the protocol. But it will also support 20 gigabit for USB 4 devices and 10 gigabit for USB 3.2. So if you have a 20 gigabit type C, you can use it on those ports, totally fine. One quick thing that I'll mention about the dual port Thunderbolt controller, each port is capable of 40 gigabit. That's about four gigabytes per second. However, the controller itself is also only capable of about 40 gigabit, which means that the 40 gigabit is kind of sort of shared between the two ports, depending on what mode it's operating in. Now, if you're using one for a display and one for Thunderbolt, it's not gonna be a problem. And it does support daisy chaining devices. You can daisy chain a bunch of devices if it's Thunderbolt 3, or about three devices if it's Thunderbolt 4. So it's just a bottleneck between the PCI Express interface and the rest of the system, but you do have two 40 gigabit ports. It's just that if you're using all 40 gigabits of bandwidth on both ports at the same time, you're gonna have a little bit of a bottleneck. To be clear, that's not MSI's fault. That's the chipset from Intel. Intel doesn't think anybody's gonna use more than 40 gigabits, even on Thunderbolt 4. But at least we have that nice eight lane PCI Express connection from our chipset, Z690, to the actual CPU. So even if you're rocking all three M.2s, plus the Thunderbolt interface, plus all of the peripherals, you're not gonna saturate the new Z690 DMI link between the chipset and the CPU, which is awesome. So that's good. And then we have two mini DisplayPort inputs. Again, those are what connect to your GPU. There's one cable in the box, so if you're gonna run you know, dual displays, you'll need that. It's very interesting here because they did not connect the Thunderbolt controller to the iGPU um, in the Intel CPU. So that's actually a nice touch. I'm glad they did that. Then we have our analog audio out. So it's mic in, line out, and line in. However, with the Realtek 4080, you can retask those ports and make them be whatever you want. But you may be saying, wait a minute, that's not enough outputs for 7.1. You would be correct. But there's also the front panel audio, which gives you two more connections. So you can use all of those and get your 7.1. All right, what else do we get in the box? Two SATA cables, keychain screwdriver, two more SATA cables, a total of four SATA cables. This is a dust wand, so you can dust the system or get your fingerprints off of it. Then we've got a nice Wi-Fi antenna. This is a movable Wi-Fi antenna. This is the higher end one. That is for our Wi-Fi 6E solution, so you're gonna have the highest end Wi-Fi chip that is out right now, plus also a movable antenna, which helps with reception and that kind of stuff. Nice touch. We have a mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort adapter. This is so that you can feed the DisplayPort output of your GPU back into the onboard Thunderbolt controller on this motherboard. It comes with an attractive USB flash uh, drive that contains the drivers and things like that. You can use this for your own stuff if you want. That's totally fine. There's some extra M.2 screws. The user's guide. Another motherboard accessory is that 5050 digital rainbow header to the Corsair 3-pin header. So if you've got Corsair 3-pin devices, there is a cable adapter included right in the box. A lot to be excited about here. All right, for the rest of our build. First, this is cool. This is designed for, you know, 92 millimeters. 
This would work fine in our Cooler Master NR200, but I wanted a little bigger reservoir. Plus I also wanted to reserve those parts for the uh, NK7-1, so I picked this up with my own money. This is the EK Quantum Kinetic. This is just like this, except this is a 140 millimeter fan mount version. Now the Cooler Master NR200 doesn't have a 140 millimeter fan. Okay, well, yeah, it does in the top, but that would be horizontal and weird. So what did I do? I made a 3D printable adapter to mount it on the back. So it's going to stick off the back of the case. See, if we look at our internal layout, we've got plenty of room down here, there's plenty of room up here. There are some really large fans, you know, cause this has got the AIO, cause this is the max version of that case. And so you can see, you know, if we mounted it horizontally, I guess it could work, but that would be weird. And there's not 140 millimeter room at the back, but there are mounting holes and I've got a 3D printer. Where there's a will, there's a way. So check it out at the rear. There's our pump reservoir combo. And you can see that the tubing sort of goes into the bottom. So the rest of the inventory of our parts. We've got two Noctua fans here in the front. And then behind that is a 240 millimeter radiator. In the bottom, we have a slim 240 millimeter radiator with two slim Noctua fans. Next up is our GPU. The MSI Supreme X 3080 is my first pick for this build, but the Cooler Master NR200 is very accommodating, even for oversized GPUs. So we did another video where we actually stuffed the EVGA 3080 FTW3, which is one of the largest PCB 3080s that you can get into this ITX case. There is not even one millimeter to spare, but it works and it gets adequate cooling. So something to keep in mind. So we've got our MSI 3080 Supreme X for our GPU. We've got our Kingston Fury DDR5 memory running at 5600. We've got two 240 millimeter radiators, four Noctua fans, two slim. These are the higher static pressure fans from Noctua. And I did have to get a little creative with the, uh, the tube routing. This is all flexible tubing, but it comes out of the bottom of the radiator on this side of the case, and it comes up and over and down and around. And that's because it was too hard to route the tube in through here because of the size of the GPU printed circuit board and because it needed to go into this side. This is the inlet, this is the outlet for the, this particular block that I'm using. For the CPU block, I'm using an EK Quantum Velocity Squared CPU water block. This one's designed specifically for LGA 1700, or at least it says, LGA 1700 based platform on the bottom. Yeah, it does have RGB if you're interested in RGB. I think the RGB from the pump side of things is more than enough RGB in my life. I mean, really. <laughs> At the time I was shooting this, uh, the Alpha Cool Ice Block XPX CPU cooler came in. This is another one that I also picked up with my own money. And I was really curious about it because the reviews on this are really good. So maybe in a future video we'll do a a head to head, a side to side, because Alder Lake, oh boy, it does get warm if you're dumping 250 watts through it. So eh, there you go. Oh, and another thing I'll show you. I'm using the front as a heat sink. This is an Intel P4500 four terabyte SSD. It's a pretty good games drive. It's not the fastest in the world, but it's consistent and it's very reliable. This is metal. That gets warm. This is metal. Thermal pad in just the right place between this and the drive, and you're good to go, basically using this as a heat sink. It does work well. There is actually normally two three and a half inch bays in the front here where you can mount something like your U.2, and then I've got the Intel adapter cables to go from U.2 to M.2. You can kind of see what we've got going on from this side a little bit. Got our M.2 to U.2 cable, but more importantly, you can see our slim, it's a it's an 18 millimeter, 240 millimeter radiator with our Noctua fans, and it gives us just barely enough room to fit the GPU with its block. Now, if you were using a GPU that wasn't water cooled, you're not gonna have room for anything in the bottom. You really need your GPU to be this thin <laughs> and, and interface with your custom loop. Otherwise, you're in for a bad time. So what's the verdict on Z690 and Alder Lake and an ITX build with the highest end GPU, no compromises basically. Well, it works. It's not loud and it doesn't throttle. I consider that a win. I did end up adding another 140 millimeter fan in the top just to give it a little bit more exhaust out the top. 
actually probably could add a third 240 millimeter radiator to this system in the top. I'm really tempted to do that. I might do that in a future video, but uh, you'd have to get subscribed in order to see that. So, I don't know. If you have any questions about this build, or you undertake a build like this, based around the MAG Z690i Unify, join us in the forums at level one. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. You sleep now. You sleep. Oh, my God.